Rider fans, welcome to the Bronx Hot Seat, our show that gives you an up-close and personal glimpse of some of our team, student athletes, and coaches. I'm your host, Karen Torsha, and this week on the Bronx Hot Seat, we're bringing you a very special episode that I have been super excited about for quite some time now, where instead of talking about sports, we're going to talk about fashion with one of college sports' newly minted style icons. And no, I'm not talking about me, and I'm very disappointed about that, because as much as I love sports, you know, I'm still happy to be, you know, talking about fashion with someone else, because, you know, like I said, I love sports, but I love fashion, clothes, shoes, and shopping even more. So, without further ado, joining me on the hot seat today is college basketball's most fashionable head men's coach, as recently named by collegeinsider.com, Ryder's own Kevin Baggett. Welcome, Bags. Glad to it. have you here today. Thank you. And let's set the record straight. She is still the most fashionable person, even on, over top of me. So, well, you know, that, I did that, have to look good today. I needed to always. I couldn't always. have you wearing anything that was going to top me because you know I host this show. Well, I, I figured that. that would, regardless of what I put on, that wasn't going to be the case. Right. So. Right. Mm -hmm. So, for most of you that don't know, um, Angela Lento and Danielle Wolf and the folks at CollegeInsider.com do a tournament, a mock tournament all every year that's called the Fashionable Four. And it's where they pit college head basketball coaches and assistant coaches, they have a separate bracket for them, against one another to determine who is the most fashionable coach in college basketball. And it actually mirrors the actual NCAA tournament where you have, you know, your first four, your fashionable four, your elegant eight, and all those kinds of things. Um, CollegeInsider.com staff picks them. Um, but they go a little bit by the tweets that people also send in. And I will tell you that Ryder Athletics sent quite a few uh, tweets on behalf of, of you. So and I certainly appreciate yeah. them doing that for me. So to get started, I have just a million questions for you, but I'm going to start with an easy one. What, right. does, what does winning the most fashionable or winning the Fashionable Four award mean to you? Well, I'm very appreciative of people recognizing that and, and recognizing the uh, suits that I wear. But more importantly, I... I'd rather get to the NCAA tournament than the fashionable award, but if I can't get to the NCAA tournament, then I certainly uh, would like to win this award on a continuous basis. Well, you now you did beat quite a few people I did. for this, yes, and we're going to talk about a little bit of them later. But we're going to start with your first round. You were a 15 seed right. going in. You know, 15 seeds. Yeah, every now and again in the basketball sense, you get a 15 that beats a two. Fashion-wise, right. you know, that's not always the easiest thing. And and you had to take out in the first round one of your good friends, mm -hmm. your former teammates at St. Joe, who I'm going to point out is also a two-time winner of this Fashionable Four, Drexel's own Bruiser Flint. And now I have to ask, how did you pull off what many people, including Bruiser himself, say is the biggest upset of the entire Fashionable Four <laughs> tournament? <laughs> well, it's taken some time for me to be able to catch up to my mentor, quote unquote, uh, in Bruiser Flint. But, um, you know, I, I knew sooner or later I was going to have a chance to, to up in him because, you know, just from watching him and, and some of the things that he's done from the coaching ranks, from the from the suits that he's worn, I, I've taken quietly, I've, I've, I've evaluated him and said, you know what, I need to get a little better than him on this and that. So, um, but not only beating him on this, but we also had a chance to yeah. beat him this year on the season. So uh, it, it was certainly a great year. Yeah, for he me. lost to you twice this year. He I'm, did. I'm, I'm he fairly did. certain he's not happy about that. Yeah. And he'll get to hear it until, you know, we meet again. Right. And, you know, we're going to kind of talk a little bit more about Bruiser and the other coaches that you beat along the way. Well, I might have a few pictures that we're going to compare. Okay. Some of them might cause a little uproar, but that's <laughs> all right. You know, I'm not going to worry about that. So all this right. next question is kind of a two-parter. Um, I remember one time when you first got to Ryder, you frantically came running into my office because the team was about to start practice, and right. you were like, KT. My suit maker's coming. Can right. you can you just can you just greet him and get my suits and my shoes? And I'm thinking, who has a suit maker that delivers? Like, I want right. to buy clothes. I got to go to the mall right. to kind of get them. So, it was a lot of shoots, suits and shoes that day. I mean, yes. we dropped them all into your office. And your office, you know, when you were an assistant here, wasn't that big at the right. time. It pretty right. much ran over that. So, yes. that being said, who do you think is your style icon, or, or who do you like to wear, or maybe? What do you look for when you're going to buy a new outfit, or you're going to your suit maker? Well, there are a couple of guys that I look at. One would be, in the sports industry, would be like a Deion Sanders. I remember one day watching him on NFL Total Access, and he had this suit on, and I had to take my cell phone and took, uh, take a picture of it, 
and I sent it to my tailor saying, hey, that's the suit that I'm looking for. Can you get me somewhere closest to that? And uh, he was able to actually kind of really come close to being able to do that. And then um, Steve Harvey is another guy who has a bunch of different shows on TV at this point. And I'm always watching him in the suits and the pinstripes and the, the window pane suits. So I kind of get some of my, my ideals from him as well. So those are two guys that I, other than Bruiser, that mm -hmm. I kind of try and fashion myself after. Excellent. I, I'm, I appreciate the fact that you take photos of oh, outfits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There, you know, I think I told you this yesterday, but there is an app where you can catalog for your iPhone right. all your outfits so that you know when the last time was that you wore it, right. what things go together. So, yeah, I, I'm going to have that On downloaded. On top of trying to win games as well. Yeah, well, <laughs> you may need someone just to be your, your style secretary then. Definitely, definitely. So, um, describe your closet for me. Now, keep in mind that we have pictures of your closet. Right. Right. Um, that you know we're we're showing. So right. describe it for me. How many suits and pairs of shoes do you actually own? And you know, don't bother trying to skimp on the numbers because we actually yeah. we have the photos. Yeah, and, and you know <laughs> what? I um, first of all, I'm very anal about how I do things. So I have my suit jackets lined up. Yep. On yeah, one notice, side I of my closet. That. I noticed that. In the middle, I have my dress shirts lined up in the middle and cleaners, mm -hmm. plastic, so they don't get too. wrinkled. Mm -hmm. And then down the other end, I've got my uh, my dress pants to the suits or uh, just individual dress pants and as well. And kind of color. Color oriented yeah. and, and everything, you know, from the suits that I like the most to the suits that I like the least. <laughs> and, okay, so give me the number on shoes. 30 <laughs> pair of shoes. Is that just dress shoes or does that include, like, you know, running shoes? No, workout, no, no, no. That's just, shoes. That's, that's just dress that's shoes. That's just dress shoes, casual dress I have 30 pair of shoes. I didn't even count the sneaks that I have because I'm, I'm a big sneaker person too, but which I need a whole another closet for. But that's how many shoes I have. And then I kind of took some suits out of uh, circulation mm. this year. So I'm up to 28 suits now where I was up to more. But you know, I think my body is changing a little bit. I might be putting on a little more weight. That's head, head coach. coach now, so. Yeah, a little stress, not enough little time stre to work exactly, out, eating exactly. different. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you could almost only wear one suit a season, essentially, if you look at it that way, and let, you know, except for the postseason. I mean, if you got 28 now, right. you're pretty much one suit a season. So, right. And now that, that we get to that point, I want to talk about some of your outfits. I've got some photos here of you in different suits All and right. uh, kind of want to talk about some of them. You tell me a little bit about them, what All was right. the inspiration behind them, and then, you know, let me know if you've got like a power suit or something that All you right. feel invincible in. Okay. So here's our first one. This one's kind of kind of bland for you. Okay. Uh, this is All not right. what I would normally expect out of you. Just kind of a black suit and a black tie. I right. mean, still looks good. Yeah, this is my, you know, very laid back, you know. Is this your exhibition game suit? Like you would wear something like this for an exhibition game? No, that, that's a little more than an exhibition game. But that, <laughs> that's one of those where I, I just, you can't read too much into me. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those where I'm, I'm just locked in, I'm tuned in, and, and it's not even about the suit. It's just about Man, I was I want to go beat this team in the gotcha. worst way. That works. All right, let's see. Here's our next one. I actually like this one. I do appreciate a man who can wear pink. So I, I, I some men do shy away from it. Right. But I do like that. You know, you have a pink tie on here. And I and I'm very confident in my masculinity first and foremost. <laughs> <laughs> but this is this is a suit here where it's like uh, very upbeat. You know, very confident mm -hmm. and knowing that again with wearing the pink. Well, you look that, like you're taking uh, control right here, too. Yeah, it, it's a control thing yeah. when you have the pink on because, you know, women appreciate it, mm -hmm. but yet men can appreciate the, the fact that you are confident in yourself to be able to wear pink. Mm -hmm. oh, now, this next one is, is one of my favorites because I do like this tie-suit combo. And I'm not just saying that because that's me in the background either. But, okay, you know, I, sure? am a, I am a fan of the paisley with the pattern suit. Right. Yeah. And, and, and the paisley is a, is a direct, you know, like it, it, it's one of those – power plays in and you know let's go get this done and it's, it's just very direct mm -hmm. All right. our next one this one you know I've, I've seen this one on a couple of occasions this is uh th this is more of your casual you know um I don't want to spend too much time yeah. figuring out you were what I want to You're more worried wear. about who you were winning in exactly. this game than what you were putting on. Yeah, this is like yeah. a non-TV game. It's outfit. a non-TV yeah. game. All right, I'm gonna wear this suit today, yeah. and Just I really don't whatever. care like yeah. if people are are looking at you, are looking at me or not. All right, now here's one where it's not really a suit; it's the right. sport coat with right. the with the slacks. And not everybody can pull this look off either. This is my 
contribution or my tribute to a Steve Harvey who mm -hmm. wears those type of suits more often than not. It's not even a suit, but just your sports coat and, and your slacks. And uh, this is another confident suit here. And yet the way that suit fits on me and how I feel is just a confident, you know, when I put that on. Mm -hmm. And I think our last one, that I have of you is one of my favorites because this was from your press conference when right. you were announced as a head coach. And, yes. and to me, this speaks, you know, hey, I know how to dress and I know how to coach and I know how to win. So this is like a confidence thing that looks for me. To this me. is definitely a confident thing. I, I really, the, the shirt really pulls out the suit as well. And it's certainly a confident thing to let people know that <laughs> I do know what I'm doing and I am in charge and, and you'll be proud of what I'm doing. And we should point out. That's Our a good athletic guy. director, yeah, yeah. Don Harnum, right here, who mm -hmm. did not ever win this award. Right. Uh, but he likes to call himself fashionable. So, you well, know. I would say I, I will give him credit because I, I do at times. I never really say anything to him because I know he, he likes to be built up as well. Mm -hmm. But I, I've watched his outfits, and he's grown in that. You know, I think Joseph A. Banks has really done him <laughs> well. <laughs> has really done him well of, of late as well. So... <laughs> To I'm his sure credit, be, he does look good, though. I'm sure he'll be pleased to hear that. <laughs> now that we've seen some of your style, okay. who deserves the credit for your fashion sense? I mean, I know you mentioned Bruiser. You've taken some ideas right. from him and from right. Steve Harvey. But, you know, what about Dee Dee? I mean, she comes into the gym. She rolls in, and, she, you know, she and I are always talking shoes. Yeah, you know what? It, the Dee Dee, your wife, obviously, yeah, we should point out. It, it more or less was something to where um, you got to understand where I came from. I came from, I, I had an older brother. And I had a younger brother, and I was that middle boy in the family. And so oftentimes I would get the handy-downs. And so I would get them from my oldest brother. And if I didn't mess them yeah, up too guys, bad, my youngest. But you guys are all different yeah, but sizes, I, are you not? Uh, but, no, at that time we were kind of the same height, same build. And, and, you know, I used to say my grandfather was a, you know, back in the old days, those guys wore suits all mm -hmm. the time. And, hats. And the yeah. hats, and, and they had the nice feather in there with the toothpicks mm -hmm. and so they were always clean, and my grandfather used to always be clean. I used to be like, man, if I ever could, you know, get some money to be able to do that, I certainly want to dress like him. So a combination of watching him and then also not having things when I came up, I was like, man, if I ever can get any money to be able to buy clothes, I certainly – because I, I, have, I, I have a suit game, and I have a sweatsuit mm -hmm. game. So oh, my, I know. My, and, my, shoe, my, and your sweatsuit and right. shoe game, too. Oh, I Right. Know. And my, so my in-between game is not as strong as my suits and, and, and my casual sweatsuit look. So uh, I, I'm trying to work on that in-between game where you might be able to wear that sports coat with jeans mm -hmm. and just a, a little more of a casual shirt. Just don't so. do the mock. No, nah, I, I don't want to do the mock. I'm not a fan of no. the mock. It's, no. It's, I, I just, no, I'm, the mock I'm and there a sport coat, I, I, you know. I mean, yeah. some people like it. They can pull it off. Right. No, nah, I'm definitely there with you yeah. on that. Yeah. Okay. So on game day, how do you decide what to wear? Like, do you have any superstitions? Because, I mean, I told you the other day that, and it's, you know, I'm probably one of the most superstitious people ever, but I will not wear to one of your games right. something that I've worn earlier in the season that if you lost in it or the previous season. So I've given away a lot of clothes right. over the last <laughs> couple of years. Not so many this year, but right, there right, were a few yeah. lean oh, yeah. years in there. Yeah, yeah. And I can't wear any of those clothes anymore. I, I'm not a superstitious person. I, I more or less look at it like when I when I put on a black suit, it kind of reminds me of that funeral type mm -hmm. when you wear that. So when I want to play the Ionas or, or or when we play Fairfield next year, we've lost to three straight mm -hmm. times now, I'll put that black suit on because I want to bury that team. Right. And so that's the way I look at it or, or, or just, okay, how am I feeling that day in terms of what suit do I – what, what, what is it like outside? Is it right. nice? You know, so those are all things that kind of come into, you know, me choosing the suit. But so there's a lot more that goes into uh, it than you just go into your closet yeah. and be like, Ugh, yeah, I'm going to wear this today. And, and if it's a TV game yeah. or if well, it's I mean, a uh, exhibition, so then that, that comes into play as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So before I make the actual presentation of your award to you, I thought it might be nice to kind of take a look at, you know, who you beat to all be right. named the most fashionable uh, head coach in the country. So I want to remind everybody that Coach Baggett was a 15 seed when we started there. So 15 seed. 15 folks. seed. So you know because, and I, I have a feeling. Well, I just want to point out that any of these photos I cannot be held accountable for. <laughs> uh, my crack research staff did a lot of research, and I have tremendous people that work for me. So they're the ones who found all these photos. So if anyone is offended by these photos, this is just my disclaimer right now. So we're we're going to start with Bruiser, who you beat in the first round. He was the number two seed. 
and uh, you know, of course, from Drexel. Right. And so I, I, I want to take you back. <laughs> we, we've got this number. Yes. And you know, now I, I will say that that Bruiser was very upset to have lost to you in this, and he said that you know, there's never a, a photo of him in a bad outfit. Right. And I mean, we did a little research. I would not say that this is one of his most stellar. No, but he's got that jacket on. It's like a camo or. That's one thing I don't have in my repertoire of suits, th those type of jackets and things. So th that's something later on that as I get older, as he's getting old, yeah. that I might put in my... Yeah, just my, don't, don't do it Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm not there no. on that. Okay. No. Uh, this next one is a little more recent from him at Drexel. <laughs> People do tend to think he's a little volatile, but, I, you know, he can still, he, he still sort of pulls off the outfit. He still pulls it off, regardless of how he looks in the game or how he's fuming at the mouth, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, this next one is really a throwback. Okay. Um, and, and, and I'm not taking credit for this one. All right. At all. All right. So, um, this might be <laughs> from your days at St. Joe's with him. Oh, man. And I'm, I'm thinking that these are some designer jeans, like Jordache or things, but I mean, quite honestly, Nothing against him. He does for back in the oh, early the, 80s. The it's shoes. It's pretty, pretty the, stylish. The belt, the shirt, mm -hmm. you know. Now, I'm going to share a story with you that um, he might not want me to share. But back in college, uh, again, he would always rant and rave about how great of a dresser he is. And he'd hammer guys on their clothes. So we were kind of messing with these girls from Villanova. And I'm sorry, Bruiser, if I'm going into this. <laughs> <laughs> so Good, you're going to get in trouble. I am going to get in trouble. So these two particular girls we were messing with had a little bit of money to them. And so somehow or another, this girl started buying Bruiser, like, expensive clothes. And I'm like, to her girlfriend, like, you're going to let her do that and not get me anything? Uh, so next thing you know, it was like his girl or, or his friend would bring over some things. And then I'd be like, man, this is what he got. Now, what are you going to do? So it ended up being like a So you guys are always in competition. Uh, I mean, not we've now. We've always been in you competition. You were in exactly. college as teammates, now as coaches you are, and right. now in fashion you are. Fashion, no question. So wow. it started from then, but it started from him because he started it all. Oh, okay. I was just kind of learning from him, mm -hmm. and, and then it kind of branched off from there, though. All right, so in the second round, you beat Steve Lavin from St. John's, who was a 10 seed. and. I don't recall the last time I've seen him wear a tie, actually, in a game. Yeah, he's gone away from it, but I, I've always thought, and, and he used to have the hair moose back mm -hmm. or gel back a little more, and that's a little more freer. But I, I've always thought and respected that he's a great dresser, and he likes to wear the pinstripe mm -hmm. suit. So and I, he's got the pink on. He does, he does. give him props for the no pink. No question. Okay, so the next round in the Sensational 16, you beat Ben Jacobson from Northern right. Iowa, right. who we saw a couple of years ago, who was a three seed. Right. So again, you're a 15, you've now beaten a two, a 10, and now you're beating a three. Right, and, and, I, and I can respect what he has on. It's pretty much that those solid colors. You can't go wrong putting those on, but. The, they may not have a suit maker in Iowa. They might not, but that might be like a exhibition mm -hmm. slash, um, you know, preseason game that I would wear that outfit, but it looks good on him mm -hmm. though. Absolutely. Uh, now, this next one in the, in the lead eight, I have to apologize because I have no idea how to pronounce his last name, but he's from North Carolina Central, Lavelle Moton. Okay. Um, he was a nine seed. Right. I mean, quite honestly, not the most flattering photo of him, but I guess our, my research staff didn't have a lot to, to go on. And, so. and to his credit, he's got the red shirt and the, and the tie that goes with it, but, I, you know, I, I don't know if I can pull that red shirt off, although I like wearing maybe a black shirt or couple of different I, I'd rather like this shirt here that I have on mm -hmm. a little plaid mm -hmm. shirt um, but a, a bright red shirt like that I, I, I'm not and I don't think I, I don't know what North that. Carolina's Central's colors are maybe right. that we're at is true, one of their true. one that of their colors correct. true now okay here which I think is quite honestly a much bigger upset than right. you beating Bruiser uh, you beat in the national semifinals <laughs> you heard that brew by the way you beat <laughs> in the national semifinals a, another two-time fashionable right. four winner who, quite honestly, I have been a very big fan of for many right. years. I don't make any, I don't make any bones about that. Okay. Uh, he was also a number one seed, Jay Wright from Villanova. And, and this, I don't have any man crushes on any men, but uh, this man can really dress. And and I actually, um, we were dealing with the same tailor early mm -hmm. on, uh, but since then I've gone on to a new tailor. But. He's always sharp. I mean, you know, it's that look where you can eat off a floor that looks clean. He, 
He's, he always <laughs> looks clean from top even to bottom. Even when he takes the jacket off, even he's when a little he, no heated. Question, he's no still question. put together. Yeah. I was a little disappointed because, you know, he normally wears a pocket square, and we can't yeah. see it in this photo if he's got a pocket square on or and, not. And, and I respect guys that wear the pocket square, but for me, I, I think I have to, you know, kind of disseminate between it being a game or it being, you know, somewhere where you're, you're going to be dressy a little more dress I, I just have never gone to that stage because at that point i don't want it to everything to be drawn on to me right. so to his credit he's a sharp dresser. well i do want to read you seth greenberg who has a lot to do with the fashion before for college insider writes a column on it and i do want to read you his comments about when you were about to go up against jay all right he says and this is these are quotes from him how about the metro atlantic athletic conference commissioner rich enzer has to be pleased with getting two coaches into the fashion before Rick Pitino protege Steve Massiello from Manhattan and Kevin Baggett from Ryder would appear to be up and coming stars, but I do think both have their hand full with their national semifinal matchups. Baggett faces the monumental task of outstyling Clooney. In my opinion, the annual fashion award should be named the Jay Ryder Award. There is nobody prettier and more debonair than Jay. That, that's, that pretty much sums it up. It does sum it up. And, and prettier, I, I would certainly say Jay Wright and prettier kind of go oh, hand absolutely. in hand. No and question. as he and gets older, nothing changes. Nothing. Yeah. And, and the George Clooney, I, I could see that. And, and absolutely. So he, he's, pretty, he, he's pretty accurate. He's well established there, too. He's definitely well established. I don't know if the award needs to be named after him, but I could see why he would say that, though. Well, and then finally, in the national championship, in a Mac on Mac you know, Mac national championship. Mac. I don't know how often, if that will ever occur in the real tournament, right, but right. at least in the fashion before it did, okay. you did beat a five seed, Steve Massiello from Manhattan. Now again, power tie, yes. wearing the red, Right. Rick Pitino, protege. Yes. Now we do have to recall that Rick Pitino did wear a white suit to a game at one point right. for a whiteout. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know if Mass could pull yeah. that off. I, 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 In fact, I would go on record to say I don't think he could pull it off, but I, I think I do like his suits, but the one thing that would differentiate me from him are the shoes. Yeah, you absolutely. Know, and I, I, I've quietly have evaluated his outfits, and I've seen his shoes, and I'm like, they're good for him, but I, I wouldn't wear those. I'm more of your lizard, your alligator, those type shoes. Much where, like you have on today. Much like I have on today, but for him, it's a little more of the Healy and mm -hmm. I, I – I respect the suits and his coaching ability. There are, but. there have been some unconfirmed reports that there is an additional little bit of space on the heel. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, I don't know that for a fact, but yeah, just, I, I could wear my flats or again. heels and still well, be the you same have the height. height you yeah. Know, so. Now, I, I do want to point out too that um, there is a bracket for the assistant coaches, okay. and one of yours. Now, he wasn't in it this year, but right. one of our own yes. really can make a strong case for himself I for agree. next year, and and that's your own assistant. Lou Rowe. This is a picture from Lou from this year. Now, no question. And, you know, there, and there's been times where I, I'm looking at Lou, who's like, man, that, he's, he's a sharp looking guy. Carries are you just saying that because well. people confuse the two of you all the time because you look the same? And I always say he's a better looking guy than me. <laughs> and, and him being tall, his, his physique and everything, um, he certainly wears his suits well. And he looks good. And he's a very confident person. And, you know, the suits that he, sa that he wears absolutely says he's mm -hmm. confident as well and he's a he's a watch guy too he right. has quite a few uh watches apparently so right right uh, well now it's time for me to actually make the real presentation to you of your okay. award that has been here on the table i don't want to drop it much right. like we've seen happen lately uh, but ladies and gentlemen i am now presenting to you the most fashionable men's basketball coach in the country kevin baggett there you go with your award and I appreciate it. And I want to thank Angela and Danielle and the people from collegeinsider.com. You guys have really done a great job. I enjoy uh, following this. Even when I was an assistant and had an opportunity to get in there, I was higher than the 15th seed and never got as far as maybe the second or third yeah, round. Yeah, I think you so, got to the second round. Because remember, we round. took some photos of you right. and sent them in. It was right. like, you have to include this guy. Right. So I definitely appreciate you all. And I accept this. And thank you very much. Many thanks to Ryder men's basketball coach Kevin Baggett. I have to say that I was honored to be in the presence of a style icon today. Uh, but before I go, I do want to give my special thanks and congratulations to Angela Lento and Joe Dwyer and all the folks at collegeinsider.com on the New York Emmy that they won this past weekend for their special series on New York City basketball. So for more information or to check out more photos of Coach Baggett and his fashion sense, you can go to our website, www.gobronx.com. I'm your host, Karen Torsha. Thanks for watching, and go Bronx! Bye.
Yeah.